Can you imagine? Oh my God. This is the second time I'm actually shooting this video because the first time I did it, I forgot to add the mic to the recorder. Oh my God. Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a fantastic holiday season. Uh, you're with your family, you're taking the day off, you're taking the week off, you're taking the month off for some of you. But I hope you're having that quality family time um, during the holiday seasons. So today I want to talk about five easy ways that you can use to try and verify the legitimacy of a company uh, from the comfort of your home without having to go anywhere. Now I must stress this, this is only for those that are unable to do two things. You are unable to go and inspect uh, or at least verify that the company is conducting business at that specific address that they've shared with you or you're unable to conduct a search through the patents and um, company's registration agency, uh, PACRA. Now these two are the most sure way uh, you know, you can establish if a company is actually legitimate. Uh, but these five easy methods I'm going to show you is for those that are unable to do these two things and they can do this from the comfort of their home and especially for those that want to send money through electronic means. This could be through Airtel money, uh, you know, e-wallet or conduct uh, or rather process a visa payment without having to physically actually interact with the company. So let's get right into it. So the first thing you can do is go to the Zambia Revenue Authority website, okay? Now the Zambia Revenue Authority um, is the institution that collects taxes on behalf of the state or the government. So Zambia Revenue Authority requires that any company that is conducting business within the boundaries of Zambia registers with it. And, and once they conduct that registration, Zambia Revenue Authority will issue what we call a TPIN number, okay, Taxpayer Identification Number or a TPIN. Uh, most of us Zambians or citizens or those conducting business here, those that have um, bank accounts obviously have a TPIN number, but even businesses are required to have a TPIN number. So if a business uh, wants to conduct uh, its um, you know, activities within the boundaries of Zambia, they'll have to register and they'll receive a TPIN number. Now, what you can do with this TPIN number or what we can do is that once we go to the Zambia Revenue website, we can punch in the name of the company or the business name that uh, was shared with you. And once you do that, the database of Zambia Revenue Authority will be able to share with us the TPIN number. Now, any company that wants to, uh, you know, Con conduct frivolous uh, business and activities within the boundaries of Zambia might not necessarily be interested in having to register with Zambia Revenue Authority. So if you're able to find that TPIA number next to the name of the business uh, or a company that you wish to do business with, then definitely uh, that should give you some portion of uh, you know reassurance that the company is trying to be uh, legitimate. In most instances, scammers do not want to pay any taxes to the state because they do not want ZRA to follow them. And for you to get a TPIN number, you need to share with Zambia Revenue Authority the PACRA documents, okay? Uh, that show who the owners of the companies are. So in most cases, if a company does not have a TPIN number, you should stay away from that company or you should seek further uh, clarification as to whether uh, they're a legitimate company before you can send them any money or do any business with them. So now the second method you can use to try and verify or at least establish if a company means to do legitimate business is by visiting their social media platforms. Now in this day and age, most companies have a social media presence. So we can now use this to our advantage by going to their social media platform. What you need to look out for is that when you go to their social media platforms, find out number one, what is their following? If they have a huge following, uh, it could potentially mean that the company uh, has a good standing in society as well as a huge number of uh, customers that come to it for that particular service. But this thing alone is not enough. What you need to also do is that you go through the post and see what people are saying about the company. 
Now, any customer who's had uh, an interaction with this company might want to, you know, submit a recommendation to say, no, I, you know, I, I had a good service with the company or maybe this went wrong or maybe this went right. It's important for you to use that to your advantage. Once you go to their, say, Facebook, Twitter or Instagram account, see what uh, interactions the company has with its clients or potential clients uh, such as yourself. When you have a look at that, see what comments. Are they positive comments? Are they negative comments? From there, you'll be able to get a feel of you know, uh, how, the co how the company is, is carrying its, um, itself in terms of its business activities. But if you find that there are a lot of recommendations from uh, uh, clients that have interacted with this company, then that could also be a good sign. And that is one that you need to you know, uh, take into consideration before you do any business transaction with this company. However, I want to point out or mention to you that there are some companies that are in the habit of uh, using what we call bots or robots to provide very good recommendations one after another. So it's important that once uh, you get to the social media platform of the company and you look at this recommendation, do take time out to just click on one or maybe five actually, not one, five to ten of these people that are commented or you know given the company a good recommendation to see that they are real people. Because some companies, as I've said, they do get bots or robots to give good recommendations over and over and over, which bury out what people might actually be, you know, experiencing when they interact with the company so do take time out uh, once you click on the profile of any one of the people that have given a good recommendation you need to be able to see that they have a life and you know they've got other friends and just do a you know a random search just to make sure that that's actually a real person and not a robot that was just set up to give a good recommendation to the to the to that particular business or company so that is a good measure that you need to take now the third way you can do a quick search to try and reduce the probability of being scammed is finding the company's website. Um, what you ought to do is, if a company um, you know, advertises its services, look for whether they have an official website where they list all their services and you know, uh, details of who they are and how to contact them. Now in this day and age, most companies have an online uh, you know, uh, presence. Uh, apart from social media platforms, and that is the website. Go and find the website. Uh, once you get to the website, look for what uh, the, uh, the page they call the About Us page or uh, the Contact Us page. Once you go to this page, you should be able to see, you know, the address, maybe the history of the company, some of the values and principles that the company follows in uh, while conducting or in doing uh, its business within the boundaries of Zambia. It's important that you have that information so that you get a feel of how the company intends, you know, to, to, to conduct its business within the boundaries uh, of Zambia. Some companies have gone as far as, you know, listing the names of who the directors are, even putting up what we call the organizational structure. So you're able to see who works as what. And what you can do with that information is that if there are names, extract those names and try to do a search on social media, uh, it'd be Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to see if these people are actually real people. And if you're able to find them, uh, that's a good sign because no one wants to put their face on something that's, you know, meant to be a scam. Ideally, most scammers or uh, people that are out to get your money would definitely not want to be recognized. So if they put their faces and their names, that means they're trying to tell you that, yes, I believe in this project or business and I've got nothing to hide. So that's a good sign to us customers. Uh, who want to visit their page and just, you know, try and uh, verify the information that um, the company is trying to give us. So if you do find their details and they, they're able to put the, uh, the director's name and the managing uh, partners or what, whatever administrative position that they want to share on the About Us page, do take time out to extract those names and do a background check uh, through the on, uh, online social media platforms and see whether uh, you know, you're able to find the same people and see how their profiles look, whether they interact with other people and they're not a robot or a bot, uh, they're actually real people with real lives. And if you're able to do that, then that's definitely uh, a good sign. But I also want to mention to you that uh, 
websites uh, are also known to be you know uh, very unreliable because a website can be built within five minutes and i kid you not five minutes uh, you can do that with squarespace uh, and other platforms that provide an easy template you just copy and paste now once you create this website for some you don't even build for three to four months it's, it's absolutely free so you must be very cautious if you you know you 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 want to base your decision to conduct a transaction with the company simply because they have a website and you know the information looks official uh, take it with a pinch of salt uh, only take it as an added you know added um, advantage if they do have uh, the that information about us the values and the, uh, you know the registration details the directors and you know senior management posted on their page that's an added advantage to you being able to verify or at least reduce the probability of being scammed but that alone is not enough remember websites can be created for free within five minutes so we can move on to the next way you can try and verify or at least uh, you know reduce the probability of being scammed and that is through the use of Google now most people would get the name of the company and put it in the Google um, search bar and then click search and that's it but that's not enough what you need to do is that you need to put in the company name and add the words is it legit or is it a scam for instance if we say book world we want we put book world is book world legitimate or is book world a scam the reason why we need to do that is because google works uh, by sending bots into the internet okay i'll use the word internet here uh database uh for for my you know simple viewers and what those bots do is that they pick out on those topics that are being discussed more often so if your question is is book world legitimate it will look for articles that discuss whether book world is legitimate and what that will do is that if you find that the search results are multiple articles that are discussing whether book world is legitimate and there are multiple comments then that should be a red flag okay for you but if you find that um, in this instance book world has you know uh, recommendations positive recommendations then that's a good sign that's a good sign that the company is conducting legitimate business and might be um, registered according to the uh, you know the provisions of the law within the boundaries of zambia so if you're enjoying this quick video so far and you'd like to see more quick videos please don't forget to click the subscribe button click on the bell icon so that you get notifications each time we upload a new video and of course don't forget to click like likes i feed on likes you know i do click on the like button that would definitely give me the motivation to work on the next video so let's get right to the next point which is the last point and the last point is true color yes true color now most of you have this application on your phone the way true caller works is that true caller requests for information from uh, its users contact list okay so multiple people have it installed on their smartphones and it gets information from their contact list so if a company has an interaction with anyone that person will save the details on their smartphone so when you come through and try to get that number the official number of the company and call it it's true caller will show you the name of the company so now the trick here is that if you're dealing with a company and you dial their number their official number their official number must at least show the names of the company i say that because anyone who's interacted with the company like for instance we will still use book world here uh, would we'll definitely save it as Book World Limited or Book World Zambia. If the number that you're calling shows up on your True Caller application as Arthur or John, and yet it's Book World, then definitely that's a red flag. Okay, that would mean that it could be that you're dealing with a person that's uh, pretending to be with Book World. So my number one rule of thumb is that all these five quick methods that I've shared with you must all check out. For me to do business with a company in the absence of, of, of going through to Pakra 
or you know going going to their you know business address all these five methods must check out if one of them does not check out then definitely i'll hold on to that transaction and i'll find time to actually go there in person and uh, either conduct a search through pakra or uh, be able to physically inspect uh, the business premises of the company so if you have any other free over the net methods to try and verify or at least um, reduce the probability of being scammed please do share them in the comment section below uh, you might not know let's be the brother and sister's keeper uh, let's save the next online shopper who knows you might just save a life because of late the number of scammers um, has definitely increased so it's up to you and me as consumers and customers to try and assist these companies uh, without some of these scammers. Some are pretending to be working with companies and some are outright just uh, claiming to be owners of uh, you know, different companies. And we are, there's so many vulnerable people that are just constantly sending money. Others are even sending their life savings, thinking they're investing or they're purchasing a product. And then within days or weeks, they find out that they've been scammed. So uh, I cannot, you know, um, you can only imagine how painful being scammed is and if you've not been scammed you do not want to imagine how painful being scammed is so um let's be a brother's keeper and a sister's keeper thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace